Welcome to the Picky Nerds, and it's time to talk about some build arounds. Not just any build arounds, fun build arounds. I am your host, Joe Cherries. I am your host, BZ, and that makes us the Picky Nerds, bringing you daily commander content if you want to support the channel. Patrons are the best way to do it. There's a link in the description, and there's people scrolling on screen right now, much like our patron. Grave Titan is Power 9. Yes, thank you, Grave Titan is Power 9, for the support. If you want to be like them, you use the link in the description, and you become one, because we love all of our patrons as much as we can without making them uncomfortable. Similar to the short we just released, so it's kind of like perfect timing where we said Grave Titan was the best magic card. Yes, of all time, so obviously it must be Power 9 if it's one of the best of all time. It probably pushes out Mox Jet. Yeah, that's what I would. That's what I would think. Yeah. Um. So if you want to support us indirectly, what you can actually do is go to our TCG Player affiliate link in the description below. Go there, buy the cards you were going to buy anyway at the exact same price you were going to buy them for anyway, and you support the Nitpicking Nerds simply by starting with our link. And speaking of links, Dragon Shield is the best <laughs> sleeves in the multiverse. Good sleeves. And you can buy them on a website. It's Dragon Shield's website. In the description, there's an EU or a US link. Just start with the link and then forget about it because as soon as you check out, you're supporting us indirectly, spending no extra money. Yes, and this channel is brought to you by Moxfield, while well, sponsored by brought to you by whatever. We bring it ourselves. Yeah, we. This is our studio. Yeah, uh, but regardless, uh, Moxfield ad in this video somewhere. Guess the timestamp right now. You're wrong. Good guess, though. Right. Let's just shortcut it. You're wrong. Better luck next time. You could never guess before looking into the video. But you could guess what I'm about to say, which is happy birthday to everyone whose birthday is today. And you know what? We'll throw in an extra birthday wish to all your pets. All right. So today's video, these are cards that don't necessarily require you to build around them. But when you do build around them, or if you want to build around them, it makes them better, more fun, more interesting to do. See, I would just say you kind of have to build around them. Most of these are kind of brick-like if you don't. Okay, that's fair. Okay, so let's just hop right into it. Uh, these cards are all cards designed to, when you put it in your deck, you have to put other cards in your deck with it or else the card's not very good. That's you, the whole idea. It's part of like a package. Pack, it's a package deal. So we'll start with the first one, and it's Birthing Pod. Now, for Birthing Pod, um, it's three and a Phyrexian green mana, and then you can pay for an artifact, and you pay one and a Phyrexian green, sacrifice a creature, and get one that costs exactly one more mana, mana value wise. And put it in play. And put it directly into play. So the key to this card is making sure you have a chain. Uh, you want to make sure when you sacrifice almost anything, except for the top of your chain, obviously, that you have something to go get so that your birthing pot is as strong as it can be. The more tools in the toolbox, which birthing pot, one of the best toolbox cards ever printed in Magic, the more tools in your toolbox, the more powerful birthing pod becomes and now obviously i want to say right now because i don't want to tell you all of the tutors that you can put in your deck when you're building around these cards if you want to really build around them you can make sure you have it every game you make sure you have it every game by tutoring it up with any number of tutors to make it even better so your deck's completely built around the card yeah put tutors in to get it yeah so also when you're building like a birthing pod chain it's not like oh i have a five drop we're good it's like no you kind of need like multiple of every single number like one through six because if you draw your five drop well and you can never get a six drop now like your or the five drop goes away or something and before you play birthing pod you just are locked out of getting sixes you also you want etbs right um so like you don't want your 10 drop to be apex devastator um if you have a 10 drop if you're going up to 10 on your chain apex devastator not a good get it's just a vanilla 10 10 that's not what you want to have on your chain so you probably want to switch out for something with an etb so when it comes in it does something right away or something that's bigger something that's stronger and that's the kind of build around you you're going to be doing because it's like I'll cut Apex Devastator is a card I play in like every deck because I love it. Um, but I'm going to cut it from my Birthing Pod decks because it's a terrible Birthing Pod target. And I'm going to cut Cross and Grip because I'll just put Rex Age instead. It's much more useful. Oh, it's such a huge upgrade when you now when you sacrifice your two drops, you get the removal you need instead of having to hopefully draw that creature. Yeah, like you've got removal at every mana cost in some form. You're never going to not have it. It's perfect. Oh, you can get card draw in every mana form. It's like you get to like, customize your chain. Yeah, another little chain thing that I would do is like if I had like uh, Woodfall Primus, I would have two nine drops in my deck. Because you can pot it twice. Because you can pot it, it. It comes back and then pot it again. So I want to have another nine drop to get. Next might not seem like a build around, but it kind of is, I would argue. Omniscience lets you cast spells for free from your hand and it costs a thousand mana. So one way to maybe build around this is to cheat it and play with like very specific things like Academy Rector. That's one way you could go. But I think once you have Omniscience in your deck and you understand that's your win condition, your deck has to look a certain way or Omniscience doesn't really do anything for you. If Omniscience just says play the cards in your hand for free, 
well, you could probably already do a portion of that with 10 mana anyway. You need to like filter and draw cards. And then once you turn through your library, the game's over because it's all in the play. Yeah, I think one of the, one of the like you said, it's all card draw. It's all about going through your deck with card draw. It's like when you cast Omniscience, when you follow that up with a dig through time, people are probably going to scoop because they're not going to want to sit through you going through your whole deck because now you're going to chain card draw and so you get to exactly what you need to cast it for free and win the game. Something I like flavor-wise, and this is kind of a little off topic about omniscience, I love it as a flavor win when you win the game. You win when you, when you ascend to omniscience, to yes. godhood. That's how you win the game. Omnis that is omniscience cool. is you're everywhere, right? Yes, I'm not sure. I, um, it's omnipotence. Well, that's omnipresent, isn't it? And omniscient. And omnipresent. Is omniscience, is omniscience knowing everything? <sighs> it's a tough call. It's certainly 10 mana enchantment in Magic Because omni omnipresence is being everywhere, right? Yeah, but it might be <clears throat> the same thing. I don't know. Uh, what, Let us know what all three of those if words you, are. If you're omniscient, you have ascended to some sort of godhood. You can't lose. You can't. Whatever it is, you can't lose if you're omniscient. Uh, next, what do we got? It's Sun Forger, which... BZ, you want to read what this card does? Because I don't actually know what it does. <laughs> wow. So you hate this card. You don't even know what it does. It's three-man equipment. Equips for three. Gives plus four, plus zero. And when it's equiped, you can pay white and blue. You can pay white and red to uh, unequip it. And then search for an instant or sorcery that's red or white. That costs four or less. And you just cast it for free. So this is a little bit of a instant or sorcery toolbox that once you sort of equip it, and you can maybe do some free equips with like Pure Steel Paladin, depending on what your deck looks like, you can kind of control the game in a certain way. Yeah, this is a um, this requires a package, right? Like it's a package deal. You have to put in Sunforger, and then you need to put in something between six and ten Sunforger targets, so that you can keep uh, redoing Sunforger. Busy putting his deck Misfail Planes, so he could be putting back the same cards to use them over and that over was again. Sweet. Uh, I'm now we're talking about fun, and this is definitely a fun little package. I don't like this card. I've I've, I've come down to the point of like I think Sunforger is like an awful Magic card. You don't think it's powerful? I think it's extremely weak. Power wise, now fun package, completely different deal. It seems like it's a cool, fun thing to do. It's an achievement unlocked, and once you get it going, it is very powerful. Yeah, you could, you know, like Benevolent Offering, Master Warcraft is like eh, kind of a whatever, but like you know, there's all these different things you can do besides like Source of Plowshares, Chaos Warp. You can do that stuff, but then there's just like Crush Contraband. Now you have removal, or you can get like uh, Lapse of Certainty. Now you have a counter spell. It's just like so goofy. The more, yeah, the more colors you move into, the more you get actually. That's true. Uh, crackling Dooms and like Colagon's Command. Yeah, you get actual, um, you can start getting actual counter spells. Render Silent. Render Silent once you actually move into, um, move into blue. Yeah, maybe a five color Sunforger deck would be really goofy. Just, uh, do as much as you can. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Sunforger, not a card I recommend playing if you want power at all, but a fun card nonetheless. Yeah, reduce that equip cost, and now you're living the dream. And this next one is something we tell people to build around all the time because it's free in a lot of decks, but it's Field of the Dead. And the key to building around this is literally just diversifying your mana base. I think for three colors, two three-color decks, it's the freest thing ever. It takes no effort as long as you have um, access to the lands because... If you're not restricted by budget and you just have the lands you're going to put in anyway, you want to diversify your mana base. Your mana base gets stronger the more duels you put in, the more different types of lands, the more utility you add to it. So you're already upping your mana base's strength. Now just add Field of Dead and suddenly you're getting creatures for having played a better mana base. Now for me, if you want to put a little fun tweak on this, do this to a monocolor deck, it's great. It turns out it's actually like not even that difficult. So for a monocolor deck, you don't want to like put in all these crazy crappy tap lands this is just going to make your deck terrible but there's a lot of untapped lands that still make colors like don't forget about command tower you get uh if you're in white for example you get chef at dunes that whole cycle is perfectly fine you get uh mana confluence and city brass maybe if you're feeling frisky there's like a bunch of colorless lands that you can up your count a little bit because you're monocolored so you play a little bit more than usual it's out of coach your reflecting pool uh aganjo the other aganjo there's two of those in every color and it's just like castle arden veil and all the castles and you just suddenly you're like snow covered plains fetch lands and you're like this is actually not that hard yeah uh, i think you take a hit in, in monocolor like your your mana base isn't like when you hit two and three colors, I think your mana base doesn't have to take any hit. Like, mono color is a challenge. That's where I think the fun comes in. But yeah. it's like not even that bad. Yeah, Surprisingly exactly. not that bad. You just build your – Field of the Dead is a card that is not generically good in any deck because you have to be playing a mana base that is diverse. And I think the strongest mana bases are diverse, honestly, the best ones. So Field of the Dead just – I love that the building around it is sometimes 
the way you want to build your deck anyway. Yeah, pretty sweet card. Uh, what about Sneak Attack? Yeah, Sneak Attack, I think, is another card where if I had to put it in generically good or bad, it's generically very bad. Um, if you don't build around this card, it's awful. So what I want to do with my, my deck is, one, I have to search it up, obviously. But I want to put other effects like this. I want Ilharg, another way to cheat big giant things into play without actually casting them. I want other stuff like this, and I want Graveyard Synergy. Because I'm going to be putting all the stuff in the Graveyard. Yes, I get in my attack, I attack, and then my creature goes to the Graveyard. Now I want to bring it back afterwards. So if I pay four red mana, put four things in the battlefield, put them in the graveyard, and then reanimate them, now I'm getting all the value out of these cards. I feel like this works super well with, like, Evolutionary Leap, where you can just sneak something in, get the effect, leap it into something else, sneak that in play, and just keep going, and then maybe you find a few things that can attack, jam them in, and then you leap them post-combat. Just, like, sneak attack, hugely strong. This one might not even be the most fun when you build around it perfectly, because you're, like, getting Eldrazi. Yeah, um, Eldorazi, um, I think Blaster Colossus is the is one of the yeah. actual good cards with sneak attack because when it's not, I think Blaster Colossus when it has haste and you don't actually see it coming is when it's the best. It's, it's right, when the, it is an eleven when it has haste and when they don't see it coming. Yeah, exactly. It's the not seeing it coming. It's that kind of thing. That that's when that card is actually I think good uh, in those situations. Um, this is the like if I'm building around sneak attack, I think I actually play Blaster Colossus because I'm just gonna want. Yeah, and you're obviously in a higher power uh, as zone. In, as the Pokemon community say, I'm gonna Oko them one hit KO. Oko, wow. You're just going to elk them. H O K O. Oh, Hoko. No, uh, H. Oh, no, O H. O H K O. O K O. It is Oko, yes. It's Jeez. One hit uh, KO. It's a Pokemon term for when you obviously one hit. Not well, what is actually a one hit KO is Simic Ascendancy because it wants you to put counters on things. And when you get up to 20 and then make it to your upkeep, it's a one hit KO. Yes, uh, what um, there's, a, I think this kind of fits in for alternate wing cons. Uh, this one specifically is the counters deck. You you build a silly counters deck where you put a ton of counters on all your creatures, and then you win by untapping on your upkeep with Simic Ascendancy. This is pretty easy to do. It's not hard to put 20 counters on something. It, it isn't. Um, the thing about Simic Ascendancy is it's pretty bad because uh, it doesn't do anything. It's blue green with like a mediocre ability to the, put a counter. The on ability's terrible. You don't don't think about the ability. In an emergency, it's there. In an emergency, it's there. Um, but Simic Ascendancy is a it's a bad magic card. It's, it's again uh, like like some of these. It's if you don't build around it hardcore, it literally does nothing. Right. Uh, it's pretty much just flavor text on that card. So when you build around it, you just go for the alternate win count and. People love alternate win cons. You see, this is why uh, I, I think another one that's really popular is, what's the seven man? Helix Pinnacle? Helix Pinnacle is popular. Approach Second Sun? Approach of the Second Sun was the one I was thinking of. These are all really popular because they're different ways to win the game, and they make it makes you jump through a hoop. You Change think? how your whole deck plays. Yeah. I approach the Second Sun, I don't ever need to attack you, and I never will. Yeah, that's how my deck's built. And also with Approach of Second Sun, I'm playing every version of Dig Through Time because I want to... Every version of Dig 7 or Mill 5 or something. It's like I'm playing Drawn in Dreams in my... Uh, in my version of that, because I just want to win in one turn. Yeah, I mean, I would play, like, you know, some card. I can't name a card that, like, mills me a bunch and draws me a card, but I'm playing them. I'm playing Thought Scour and Tome. Uh, not Tome Scour, Thought Scour and Mental Note. Yeah, I mean, you could play Tome Scour. It's a really bad magic Wouldn't card. Wouldn't recommend though. it. That's a really bad magic card. But yeah, it's all. I like uh, Simic Ascendancy holding the place of alternate win cons. So, like, you have to build your deck to do whatever the alternate win con is. In this case, we're just doing, we need to be doing tons and tons of counters. I also just, like. Throw in an alternate win condition, it sucks in your deck. I also like having lots of counter spells because this is going to bite the dust to every single. Removal spell as soon as it's relevant. As soon as it's relevant, it is the it just it's the target course. So because it literally says kill me or lose. It's not like or you might lose. It's like you or you just lose. It's funny we just talked about alternate win conditions. This next one's actually also an alternate win condition, but it's not for Magic the Gathering. It's just for life. It's Moxville.com. So when you sort of go, jump through all the hoops of clicking a few times and building your deck in the easiest way possible, you suddenly just win at life. And everybody else knows it, too. Yeah, the amount of time you save building decks on this website is actually incredible. Um, you Seriously, go try building on any other website and tell me you can do it as fast. You'd be a liar. You'd be a liar. Because, honestly, this website is intuitive, easy to use, and just so, so simple. Um, I, I We haven't mentioned in a while, but the search feature, when you're building a deck, only goes to your commander's color identity. Oh, Chef's kiss. Beautiful. Such, such a beautiful, nice thing to get. It makes finding the cards you want for your deck so much easier. Here's the challenge. Now you got to build a deck with all ten of these cards in it. That's and if you thought it, if you thought it was hard before, the next four are going to make it even harder. Yes, because we have another alternate win condition in Liliana's contract. This is like a medium draw spell, right? Like it's like five mana draw four. Five mana draw four. It's 
fine. Eh. Uh, yeah, f- fine is how I would put it. It's, I would say, eh. Um, yeah, eh. eh. But that's all good. But has the alternate win count in your upkeep, control four demons, you'll win the game. Same kind of thing. You just put extra demons in your deck. Put, put four, even if it's only four. You probably uh, want some cheap demons, too. Yeah, I mean, just... Put, like, obviously, this is the win count in a demon deck, but you can just you just you can add in like, hey, I was gonna play blank card, but I'll play the demon version of blank card instead. Like, oh, I was gonna play uh, Phyrexian Arena, but instead I played Blood Gift Demon. Okay, I was <laughs> I was thinking like Liliana Dreadhorde General. No, let's play the bad card, uh, Harvester of Souls. Harvester of Souls. Let's make him a demon. Uh, yeah, this is again. You need demons. I think this card is very medium without that. It's just not a card I'd ever play. Yeah, it's not a card that's gonna make the cut in my deck. Maybe if I have some sort of flicker theme, maybe I'm black white flicker. Black white Yorian. <laughs> black white Yorian. There we go. Uh, maybe in that kind of situation. But overall, I'm just not super interested in this card. So we gotta put the demons in. I love. I, it's the cheap again. This is achievement unlocked. You build around it and you look to get that achievement. Just like we talked about with Simic Ascendancy. Same thing here. Um, it's even better if you can somehow, uh, with Liliana's Contract, I would put Flash in my deck so that it's not as obvious that it, the win is coming. Or you could put uh, Maskwood Nexus, right? Yep, Maskwood Nexus, uh, also a card you can put in because then any four creatures win you the game. Conspiracy be, also. They're all demons because you're just going to make them all demons. Yeah, yeah conspiracy. It's, it's my demon, Yorian. All right, what's the next one you got here, Beezy? It's a card that I couldn't recite from memory. So, Joe, what does Sarkhan's Unsealing do? When you cast a creature with power four through six, you get to deal four to any target. Then if it's seven or greater, deal four to each opponent and each creature they control. Pretty hefty payoff, but you can only make so many seven power creatures in your deck unless, of course, you just build around this. Yes, uh, it's a huge build around. You, I think the key to this card, like, honestly, if you want to play it, Commander. I want my Commander to start with seven, and then... I can start building my deck around this effort because I don't want to put this in because it's really challenging to use um, when you're trying to rely on draws. But if you go for even more build around, you can start tutoring up seven drops uh, with seven power. And there is creatures with that are under costed that have seven power, but don't actually, um, you know, cost them. Like they'll cost like four or five mana. Like a death shadow? Yeah, just like a death shadow where you cast it. It has 13 power when you cast it because it, it, its ability isn't applying to it yet. So boom, deal six. Uh, four to everything. I like when you say under costed seven power creature and you throw in commander, I just think of Dargo. That's dirty. Because you can recast Dargo many times. Yes, and you're going to wipe the board over and over oh, just and gonna over win. again. Because they're just taking four. Yeah, I think I think that uh, if you want to play Sarkons and Ceiling, start with the commander having seven and then start putting your deck around this card a bit. Is there another partner with seven power? Uh, off the top of my head, you, there is um, Braylon, right? No, I think it's like a six eight. Uh, is it? I think it is a six eight. Uh, maybe Bra- Brynlin. Is, is there another partner with seven power? Tell us. There might not be, but Dargo's your boy. Dargo is your boy. Next, we have Wave of Vitriol, and this requires something uh, quite the opposite of what we were talking about earlier. We're field of death. Yeah, you actually have to scroll down to the YouTube comments for this one. Uh, <laughs> Jokes aside, you do have to make your deck's mana base high on basics so that when you cast this card, you wipe out all the non-basics, you don't lose anything. You're getting all your lands back to the battlefield, but your opponents will not have enough basics unless they're in one or two color decks. Because once they have three color decks, they probably don't have a lot of basics. I play like deck. seven basics in those, and you oh, play less. Yeah, I, I play. I usually play like six basics in our three color decks. Yeah. In our three color decks, um, and depending, it just depends on what deck I'm doing. Um, green decks, I tend to put a couple more basics because I'm fetching up a lot. But still, Wave of Vitriol can be so like if you destroy seven lands. There's a chance they don't have seven basics. And even if they do, their mana is much worse than it was before you cast this. Yeah, and this is where it really gets tough with your with your all 10 build arounds deck. This kills every other card on this list and also sacrifices Field of the Dead. Yes. Uh, actually, that's going to be tough. That's going to be very, very tough to do. So I guess Wave of Vitriol, don't put it in with the other 10. This you is, have to. That's uh, the deck. Yeah, Wave of Vitriol is it's, it's a card that it's I think... A seriously, it's a blowout. Like, it'll be land destruction... It'll be like a bane of progress too. Yeah, I think it, it, like it, e- even the most like basic filled decks will still suffer because you're going to get rid of some of their really strong stuff. When you get rid of their smothering tithe and they get a basic land, that's still strong. It's like a bunch of assassins trophies. You just yeah, you just you literally destroy everything that's relevant. And, and, and sometimes it's like you lose thirty things. Do you have thirty basics? I don't think so. Yeah, I built Y mana base for one of my decks around this card. And, and I, then forgot to put it in. And then forgot to put the card in, but I don't want to talk about that. Yeah, that's that's very, very expert. Now, you really don't want to wave vitriol when you have this very last payoff because it's Lich's Mastery. 
Three, black, black, black. Hexproof, you can't lose the game. Whenever you gain life, draw that many cards. Whenever you lose life for each one life you lost, exile a permanent you control or a card from your hand or a graveyard. When Lich's Mastery leaves the battlefield, you lose the game. So this card stinks. Uh, very obviously, this is not a very good magic card. So what I'm thinking is I want to give it away, right? Like I'd like someone else to have it. I would like to take it, maybe gain some life, uh, take advantage of it what I can, and then just give it to my opponent. And then my opponent is stuck with this crappy magic card, and I'll attack him into oblivion until he dies. Uh, it's really good with um, Quaza, right? That just kind of lets you go off. She says whenever you draw a card, you gain your life, which draws you a card, which drains somebody out. And also, um, Horizon Chimera, if you're in Saltai, just draws your deck. Yeah, um, exactly. Uh, I think that this, this card is very clearly something you need to be building around. Obviously, you could have the commander that you were just talking about. Uh, where Quaza. Quaza, where it's, you have the synergies that just win the game. But if you're not doing specifically that, you need to, I think you need to give this away because I don't know what you're doing with it. I mean, you could build to like gain life and do a lot of stuff, but then you have to pay that off after that. So after you've paid off Lish's Mastery, now you need to pay off having paid it off, which it's like, whoa, a lot of steps. I will say, though, one, something about the drawing your whole deck thing is like, you don't need Lab Man or Thoracle. You don't lose. You yeah. just draw your whole deck. Try to draw again, can't lose, and then you move on with your life. Yeah, exactly. You get to deal 90 damage, too. That's nice. Yeah, I mean, you, you win when you do that with this with that deck. I mean, it's really it's really hard not to win. And especially, the easiest thing to do is just put an Eldorazi in your deck. Because, again, we're building around Lich's Mastery, so we know when we go to end step, we'll discard this Eldorazi. Just do it all over and again. And shuffle in our whole entire library. And there's one opponent left anyway. <laughs> yeah, and they're dead. They're, 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 they're done. Yeah. yeah, so Lich's Mastery is really sweet. Try to give it away or try to, like, go infinite with it. Give it away is my... Uh, that's. I mean, that's what I think is fun. I mean, I think that... Put them under some pressure. I then think you wave a vitriol. I th yeah, you can do that. I think putting this card into... Um, uh, the Quasar deck is boring, and it's yeah, that's good. Like the, eh. That's actually a good card in that deck, which is not what we're talking about. I'm talking about building around this, giving it away, harmless offering it. Get it out of my way, give it to my opponent, and then kill it. Give and then, it no, and then attack them. And then attack them. Yeah, attack them is great. Anything. I wait For this one, I'm building around it to give it away. This video is kind of similar to our uh, 10 deck ideas. Very similar in that way where you build around something. So why don't you go check out this one on the screen right now? That's a lot of deck ideas. It is. Peace out, Tribe Scouts.